We've seen that SQL has operators exists and not exists, so what about for all? In logic, we have existential quantifiers and we have universal quantifiers. The existential quantifier allows us to express that there exists an object X such that the property phi holds. So phi is a formula that has to hold for some X. The universal quantifier expresses for all object X the formula phi has to hold. SQL unfortunately does not offer a universal quantifier. It only offers the existential quantifier that we've already seen, the exists. We will later see that there is a restricted form of universal quantification available using the OR keyword. So is this a problem that SQL does not offer a universal quantifier? Fortunately, it's not a problem. Of course, we can translate the universal quantifier into existential quantification. If you remember your logic course, then you will remember that for all x phi is equivalent to saying that there does not exist an x such that not phi. It's easier to understand this as an example. The following two statements are equivalent. We can say that all cars are red, so all cars have the color red. And equivalently, we can, we can say there exists no car that is not red. If there is no car that is not red, then it means that all cars must be red. So these two statements are equivalent. That's exactly this translation. We have translated an for all statement into an existential statement. SQL also does not offer the commonly used implication. So one thing that one often wants to express in queries is for all x, alpha implies beta. So if alpha is true, then beta has to be true. This cannot be expressed directly in SQL, so let's translate it step by step. First, we are translating the for all quantifier into an existential quantifier. So we replace the for all x by not exists x not. Next, we have to express the implication using negation and and or. When is the implication true? The implication is true if the premise is false or the conclusion is true. So we can replace this implication by saying not alpha or beta. And at this point we could stop or we could use De Morgan's law to further simplify this. If we use De Morgan's law, then we can move this uh, negation sign, we can distribute it over the or, but then the or turns into an and. So the or becomes an and by De Morgan's law, not not alpha is just the same as alpha, and beta becomes not beta. So this pattern that we want to express, we can do so by the equivalent statement not exists in x, alpha, and not beta. So let's practice our query formulation skills. Let's say we want to find all the students with the best result for homework one. Often it's good to start with a formulation in natural language that contains more details. For instance, already the names of the tuple variables that we want to use in the query. So we formulate that we want to find all the students S that have a result X for homework one, such that for all results Y for homework one, it holds that the number of points of y is less or equal to the number of points of x. Now we want to reformulate this query into something that SQL can understand. So we want to transform this query into something that can be expressed in SQL. However, transforming natural language queries is really difficult because they are too vague. 
So first we will transform this natural language query into something more precise. We will transform it into a statement in predicate logic. So here in the, we have translated this query to predicate logic. We say we want a set of all s such that s is a student and there is a result x. This result belongs to the student, so the sit of x matches the sit of s. It is a homework result and it is a result for homework 1. And then we express this for all quantification. So we want it for all y. If y is a result for homework 1, then the number of points of y must be smaller or equal than the number of points of x. So now we have a precise formulation of what we want in predicate logic. And now we can start to transform this query using logic reasoning. If you look at this query, then you see that we have precisely the pattern that we've discussed a few slides ago, a for all with an implication in the body. So we have this form of pattern. And a few slides ago, we've argued that this is equivalent to this pattern. So we are replacing the for all and the implication. The for all becomes the not exists. And the implication becomes an end and the phi 2 is negated. So the negation of y dot points smaller equal x dot points is y dot points greater x dot points. So now we are expressing that we want to find a student with a homework 1 result such that there does not exist another homework 1 result that has more points. And in this query now, all of the parts can be expressed in SQL. Now the translation of the predicate logic query to an SQL query is almost trivial. We see here that we query the students table with tuple variable s and the results table with tuple variable x. And exactly the same we do in SQL, we query students and the results table with tuple variables s and x respectively. The join condition goes in the where clause. The condition that we look at homework 1 likewise goes in the where clause. The not exists is translated to not exists. The subquery, we query the results table with tuple variable y, gives us in SQL a subquery with tuple variable y. And these conditions go one to one in the where clause of the subquery. So it can really help to first express a query in predicate logic. Predicate logic is a stronger language than SQL, so we can express things more freely, and then we step by step transform it into something that can be expressed in SQL.